Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to cover the third chapter that is momentum and impulse. So this is the learning objective that we need to achieve today that is to define momentum and impulse in which impulse is represented as J equal to F delta T. Okay, so what is momentum? At first, look at the bicycle and the truck. So, bicycle has less momentum while the truck has a large momentum. The reason behind this is that the truck is more massive than a bicycle. Next, look at the speed of both bicycles. One has 50 meter per second and another one has 5 meter per second. So the one that has 50 meter per second has a larger momentum compared to the slower one. So from here, we can define our momentum based on two factors. One is the mass and the next one is the velocity. So we can define it as a product between mass and velocity. Or the other definition is mass in motion. This means how fast an object moves, how heavier is an object, will all influence the momentum. So momentum can be expressed as a lower case P, that is P equal to M times V. It is a vector quantity that has magnitude and direction and the unit is kg meter per second. Okay, next we move to impulse. So what is impulse? Impulse can be defined as the product of force and time interval. So impulse can be expressed as the upper case of J equal to F delta T. And it is a vector quantity in which the direction follow the direction of velocity. The unit of impulse is newton second. So we can see that two factors that influence our impulse. Okay, we're done talking about impulse and momentum. Now we combine it, impulse plus momentum theorem. So based on newton second law, it states that the net force is directly proportional to the rate of change of Momentum, so it can be expressed as F equal to delta P over delta T. So we rearrange the equation to get F delta T. And if you still remember, F delta T refer to the impulse. So we can conclude that impulse momentum theorem is the rate of change of momentum. So J equal to delta P equal to MV minus MU. Okay, so we have two equations that represent impulse. Okay, last but not least, impulsive force against time graph is used to calculate impulse. So the impulse is represented by the area under the graph of FT graph. So that's all. Thank you.